Welcome, welcome, welcome. To- anyway, I don't know. We're just this is boring, like, boring for the people listening because no, we're, we're talking. We're talking shop. <laughs> we're talking about me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's crank up the energy as we welcome a true force of hilarity and talent to the AFK stage. He's not just a stand-up legend. He's a man of many talents. Comedian, actor, director, gamer, podcaster extraordinaire, Eric Griffin. You might recognize him from Comedy Central's Workaholics or the Adam Sandler producer Murder Mystery on Netflix, but there's so much, much more to this comedic powerhouse. Lately, he directed Matt Rife's comedy special. He he hosts his own weekly podcast, Riffin' with Griffin, and is busy getting dubs in Warzone on Twitch. Oh, and not to mention, he's preparing to welcome a new baby with his wife, Rachel. Huddle in close and turn that dial. You are now tuned in to AFK with Ninja. Eric, welcome to the show. Wow, I feel like you have a detective or something. Like I feel, <laughs> I do. It's kind of scary. It's actually that was actually kind of scary. I thought you were going to be like, and his social security number yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> and wait, at the end, we'll let you know how to steal his identity. It's Eric. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. Uh, how you doing, man? I'm good, dude. Uh, thanks. Uh, you know, I hey, I'm a. I got into gaming during the the, the pandemic, so all the kids in there, they're always they, they tell they they inform me about everybody. So that's how I fu- you know figure find out about you. So it's great. Talk about being a detective. I got it on my list in front of me here, dude. You're 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 huge. You're a huge football fan, man. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I love I love me some football. I got. I've been in the same fantasy league for over twenty years. Oh, dude. All right, first off, tell me what is like. What does the person in last place have to do? You know what we? You know what our my God, we're so old now no. that that's just not what we do anymore. So we, no. so, <laughs> so you know what I mean? Like we have a thing where like we we take every we take the winner to dinner and what? like and then like the loser maybe the loser gets the tip or something like that. You know, but it's like we just so we, twenty years ago we were into all that stuff, but you know now we just kind of like uh, it's we, just, we just doing it. We don't even talk smack work. anymore. Yeah, everybody's got no. kids and stuff yeah, and so like that. No. Yeah, no. The, old, I get the it. Old, old man, old man league is is completely different, dude. You know, I'm getting there too right now. Actually, I'm in a league as well. I've been there. I've been in the same league for like five, six years. It's uh, me and my two brothers, a bunch of our best friends growing up, and uh, some new friends and family along the way. It's like a group of, I think it's twelve or ten. So it's tough to make a team because everyone knows what they're doing. They do their research. It's really annoying. But yeah, we finally came up this year with with a last place. Oh, what is it? What is it? Dude, the, the person in last place has to buy an, an authentic outfit of their of their home team, like helmet, jersey, pads, everything, and show up like to a game in just full gear uh, to, to their home <laughs> their first home game next year. So and That's it's like- look <laughs> yeah. I've heard, you know what? That's pretty tame considering I've, I've yeah, heard, yeah. yeah, I've heard way worse. Th- I've seen some really weird things. We have a lot of fathers in this group as well in this, in this league. So we don't <laughs> want, you know, uh, we can't risk their jobs with any like embarrassing stuff. Some of the stuff we, we did originally come up with was pretty bad. Yeah, um, exactly. When you were like young, like how old are you now? I'm 32. Exactly. So, so you're in that, you're getting, getting in the home stretch of like adulthood. When you hit 35 is when you're really like, okay, now I got to start taking care of business. But you know, uh, and after that is when you start, you know, all your man stuff starts kicking in after that. I mean, we're just like, we're juvenile until we're like 35, which is crazy, but no, I definitely feel that man, actually a lot. Um, you know, I, w- one of the things we ask a lot of our guests here and the majority of our guests have been about around 30 years or older, um, is like, what, what would you rather, and we're probably going to be asking this as well. Would you rather have a, a date? you know, indoors or outdoors, right? Like an, like a, like a stay at home date or take your wife out date. And 99.9% of everyone was like, stay, stay at home, stay night in. Yeah. Well, I so, don't know. I mean, it's, uh, my wife, she loves over the she, clubs, dude. She's she, yeah. Yeah. That's not, well, I, mean, I, I don't even <laughs> know when, I, I don't know when the last time I even went to a club, what, like, what would I even look like even doing <laughs> I, it? At a club? I, I look I like know, somebody's man. dad, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't. <laughs> No, but my wife, she likes to stay in too. She's just like that, but she's not even that much older than you. My wife's 30, my wife's 34, you know? So she, um, yeah. you know, like we, like this is what she does. We'll dress up for th- for Halloween just to take the pictures and then we'll just sit on the couch and watch, yeah. like, watch Hell movies. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. how Are she does still- it. 
Do you guys still like hand out candy in the in the stuff, or do you guys take it no, off after the we pictures? Don't, you know what? I don't think people are into into it, like bringing their kids around to get strangers candy anymore. It's dying down for sure. Yeah, I, I actually, yeah, I don't think that's a thing anymore. So, <sighs> with you know, I, my day, man, I had my you know oh, my dude. Green Lantern underoos on, and I was just going to strangers' houses and just like eating candy galore. But like you know, we live in different times, so we just like oh, we're yeah. not we're not even doing that. But you know, and I'm about to have a kid, so I'm like, I don't, I, I don't. I'm thinking about it now. My, my whole world, my whole paradigm is shifting now, man. It's like, why? How did this? How is this even a thing, right? When yeah, yeah, the, yeah. I'm walking so... down. The, I'm walking down the street. Like, where's the stop sign? How come there's no crosswalk over here? You know, like right, right, right. out this of is nowhere, not safe at all. <laughs> yeah, just out of no. nowhere. I'm acting like a crazy person. Did you use a? Uh, I want to. I want to go back to football after this. But did you okay. use a? Uh, how'd you collect the candy, dude? I, there's only one right answer. Would you oh, use? Oh, I had one of those like you know, fake pumpkin. Oh, nah, dude. So you got to get the pillowcases, bro. You got to oh, get like a wow. king size pillowcase. I a would come home with a pillowcase, bro. <laughs> you just collect, dude, those things are built to last. If you get a good one, right? A nice solid cotton pillowcase. <laughs> hey, those things don't stretch and you're, you're pulling, pulling like a, you know, a couple pounds of candy in that thing, dude, before you have to come home. You know what? We grew up completely differently, you know, because... <laughs> You know, my, the, I just think about the neighborhood I grew up in. Like, we, you know, you, you didn't go past the block because I was ghetto adjacent. So, <laughs> okay, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you would get if you went too far down, you might get a 40 and a, you know what I mean? <laughs> they have you something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, so I, I was on my little block, so I didn't get that. I never really got that much candy. So I didn't really enjoy Halloween the way. Like, all right, all right, all right. You know what I mean? Okay. All right, man. So, dude, uh, who who's your team? I'm from LA, so there's no real like attachment to like anything. So it was like when you're from a smaller town or you're from Middle America, it's easy to be like, oh, that college team is my team. But mm -hmm. for me, it was never like that. So I always like, you know, I'm from LA, so I like the Rams and I like the Raiders. All right, little Rams Raiders. I'm a Lions fan. They are they are looking good though. I I, I actually like what Jared Goff's doing. I think it, what it's a great comeback story for him. You know, to go to the Super Bowl and then to like not win it, and then people like blame him, and then be traded away after you went to the Super Bowl, and then like to 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 take a franchise like this. So him and that coach have this sort of bond of like you know Dan working Campbell, hard. Baby. Yeah, and then so now they're it's paying off. I'd love to see them get to the Super Bowl. That because because I tell you the NFC it's 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 the Niners and everyone else. So if you can get by them, you can have mm -hmm. one good good game. Exactly. That's all you need. That's all you need. You just have to have that one good game. You know, maybe they sack Brock Purdy or get a lead. I mean, they could do it. Pick, maybe we start with a pick six and then a driver up 14-0 and then we just coast in the rest of the game. I'm, exactly. Yes. Exactly. I think it could happen. They would be the team to do it. So, I mean, I I, I do support uh, what's going on in Detroit. Are you from Detroit? Michigan I was, area? I was born in Detroit. Yeah, my parents uh, wow. were raised up there um, and then I was the last one to be born in Detroit and then we moved when I was a little baby to Illinois where I pretty much grew up my oh, entire gotcha, life. Gotcha. Um, so, you're, so you're from Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, my dad was a Lions fan long enough for my brother, John, my oldest brother, John to like realize what football is and what, you know, the NFL is and what the Lions are. So then John became a Lions fan. Then my dad was like, dude, the Lions suck. They've, you know, they've ruined everything. Yeah, everything they've sucked your whole life. Yeah, dude, exactly. That's crazy. So then my dad switched to the Bears. Like my brother, John stayed a Lions <laughs> fan. And then Got me and Chris into it, my other brother Chris into the NFL, and then we became Lions fans. So now here how, we are. How, how many brothers do you have? I you got have, two brothers, two older brothers. Oh, yeah. I know two it brothers. sounded like a lot the way that yeah, I Yeah, yeah, you made it sound like yeah, my other brother Kyle, my other brother John, my <laughs> yeah. other brother Leroy. I'm like, God damn, my brothers just do have. <laughs> yeah, just two, just two, just two. But um, the Lions, it's, dude, it's, I'm happy. I'm excited. I'm excited. The Lions are going to be. Um, yeah, I think they're going mean, to be dude, good they're, this year. They're there. I think it's almost impossible for us to, to not make it to the playoffs. And so it's just about winning our first game because we haven't won a game since yeah. I was born. Um, all right, straight away from uh, from sports, just a tidbit, man. You Ooh. have you stream on Twitch, <laughs> yes, and I do. You have a podcast, dude. Air, um, Air, wait, Air Griffin Gaming on Twitch, and I put those videos up on YouTube and. Uh, Riffin with Griffin is my podcast. Yeah, you talk about new uh, trending news topics. Um, dude, tell me what's that like? What's that like? How long have you been streaming? How long have you been doing your podcast? Well, I've been doing the podcast now. I'm at like 259 episodes. You know, jeez, that's awesome. Yeah, it's just like I turned it. I I, for some, I gave myself a a job. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I I feel that sometimes. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's like I got into this business to be like, oh, I want to have fun, do comedy, act, and I now gave myself a job. But whatever. <laughs> I enjoy. I still enjoy doing it. It's a little small podcast, 
but I, I, I enjoy doing it. I, I love when people c- c- you walk up to me like, oh, man, I listen to your podcast or they'll hit me up like, oh, I love your take on this movie or whatever it is like that. So, you know, I talk about movies and and, and, and whatever's going on. It's kind of like a stream of consciousness. And I do it live. Like I'm going to be doing it live, uh, like, you know, after this. I, oh, I, cool. I got to go. Yeah, yeah. So I do my podcast live, you know. And then like in terms of the gaming, man, it's just it really happened, uh, you know, during the right before the pandemic. I just started gaming and then like, the, you know, there was nothing else to do. You know, it was like I didn't mm-hmm. think anything could stop the entertainment business. And then here the pandemic comes and I'm like, well, what am I going to do with myself? So then I just started streaming and gaming and getting into like, you know, playing the the war, the, the battle royale games. And yeah. I really I really I, it just like it's my favorite thing. So. And and I've just been doing that, so it's just like you know, you know, I'm I'm the old guy, I'm I'm the daddy gamer, you know. The the kids come like to talk smack because it's like, oh, it's Montez <laughs> from Workaholics, you know, playing video games, and they can come into the chat and talk to me. And yeah, be little shits, dude. I get it. Yeah, yeah. So I have like this small community that comes all the time, and you know, it's just like. It almost feels like a little family, you know, the little Eric Griffin gaming community. So I enjoy it. Do you um have you been gaming like your whole life, uh, like dabbling, I guess, in games, and then like you know, cause I guess I, is was it like difficult to pick hmm. up, to pick up? No, no, no. I Warzone. you know because I you know because of my age, man, I go back to Atari. You know what I mean? I had that's a what I'm Cal- talking about. I had a ColecoVision. I've had I've had every single game system. You know, as they Dude, went. All right, that's what I meant. Yeah. I love, so you're yeah. a gamer. I love. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dreamcast. I had the Dreamcast. Yes, I had the, you know the what I mean. Under- I had all of that. You know, Nintendo sixty four. <laughs> you know, so it was like, and and so kids are always like. Griff, you need to get a, a PC, get a PC. I'm like, no, man, I'm console. Console, console controller, life, baby. You know, so that's how I do it. I eventually upgraded to the PC life, well, but I, I've been, you know, I, it's true. I did. But I've been gaming like, dude, just like you know, consoles, every single dude. I, people yeah. don't, people, you know, if, most people know me recently just because of Fortnite the last like six years, five years. But I, I've been, you know, I started my stream out with, uh, 12 years ago, 11 years ago now with Halo, right? So just oh. Xbox. I was an Xbox PlayStation how dis- gamer my whole how life. How disappointed were you in the Halo that came out like, like a year or two ago? Uh, how about the last decade of Halo <laughs> games? What, 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 it's so ridiculous, right? Yeah. No, but I don't you, know what they're doing. But, but well, like, can I ask you a question? Like, when, Of when, course, dude. So, you, so when you, when did it, when did you realize that this was like crazy big? Like yeah. that, that the potential of what you turned it into, was there, was there a point where you knew it was happening or did it just kind of happen and you were like, whoa, what is going on? Or was it, did you see the potential? Like, like, cause you've, you literally changed this whole thing, <laughs> man. You know, you, this whole thing is like, you know, it's like you got movie stars, athletes, gamers now cause of you. I appreciate that, man. Um, I, dude, I think that kind of like you said, your your stream is like a flow of consciousness where you just kind of go live and shoot the shit. Like that's kind of how it happened with me when I, like with streaming. It was something where like I kind of just started to do it um, while I was like working a full time job at Noodles and Company and like wow. taking part time college classes at home, and I was streaming basically every other waking hour of my life when I wasn't doing those things. And I eventually like. I started averaging like 50 to a hundred viewers. And then I got a, like an email saying that they want me to be in the, like that subscription beta, like testing to be, become a partner. Oh, you were on the ground floor of yeah. this, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was oh on Justin TV before it became Twitch and before you could even like make revenue. Oh. Um, that's off of awesome. like ads and subscriptions. So yeah, and then, so it just kind of started happening, uh, you know, again, rolling with the punches. I wasn't like sitting here, like emailing them every day, like, hey, when are you guys gonna add, like, I would like, yeah, blah, 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 I'd like to make money doing this. And all just kind of literally was laid out. It wasn't and, even a thought, it probably wasn't even a thought that, oh, you can make, you no. can make a living doing this. It's just like, no. oh, this is fun. Right. I was a professional. I was a professional gamer essentially. So I was like a pro Halo player. So I would travel to like local tournaments to try and oh. like ter- big tournaments that Major League Gaming hosted and try to like win that way. Like that was that was my goal, right? Which is like I want to make money doing this. That eventually, I mean, even that, that didn't even take a backseat. I, I just would just stream my like my practices and my scrims and stuff like that when uh when I was still competing. Like I was a professional player for like seven years while I was streaming, um, which actually gave me an edge. Because a lot of people were like, yeah. this guy's a pro player and he's streaming. So you'd get more viewers that way too. But do you think that, you know what I always think about, man, and not to go back to the pandemic, but I do feel like the pandemic derailed what could have been like, you know, filling up stadiums with gaming, you know? I, I think it could happen still if you do it right. 
but no, you're absolutely right. I the think it was, tra- it was the trending inter- there. But the issue is the integrity of the gaming. Uh, you know, I feel like the streamers, I feel like the streamers are just are very selfish. And when it terms of it's just about their own personal revenue and they're not thinking about the big picture of like, hey, well, we could we could we could make this even larger than it is. I mean, you know, you have to have the viewing public have to believe that there's integrity in the game. I mean, that's why you have the, the testing in the NBA and the NFL, even if it's like not true. The thing is, we believe that it is, you know, we believe that they're legit. The gaming world. I think that the streamers have to do a better job of being like, no, this I'm legit. And there has to be a process for that. So then the people watching could be like, oh, this person really is great. But when there's any kind of like feeling of like, I don't know if this person is, is, is legit. I think that messes with the whole gaming community. I think I, I can see where you're coming from. I, I think you could look at it both ways. I think mm-hmm. that there is a way to legitimize li- like live events with streaming. I think that it requires way more effort and way more planning and also way more risk for these streamers to rent out these venues and do these things and yeah. ask and ask their viewers to travel for the event, right? Because like that, let's be real, we're you have people like myself and Dr. Respect and Tim the Tatman and a lot of my my good friends who are massive Nick, streamers that pull tens yeah. of thousands of viewers, right? Yeah. And it's like those viewers, we can pull those numbers while we're streaming from home because everyone can watch from anywhere. So, but when we do like a live event or it's like it, it would have it would require a lot more planning and revenue f- like out of our viewers' pockets essentially to to physically come to the show. I'm assuming it wouldn't be free. You probably yeah, have to get tickets. Yeah, but it's like you pay for the NBA package and you still may go to the, the games. Dude, the yeah, NBA package also comes with 10 superstars, you know, five on each team playing for 48 minutes, you know, the four oh, times but see, a week. I feel like, dude, let me tell you something right now, okay? There are people that will watch you Yes. for 11 hours in a row. True. No one will watch basketball for 11 hours in a row. Gambling addicts would. <laughs> yeah, but then, but but again, then now you're getting into what I'm saying, like how the revenue can really, like, yeah, right, I don't there, know, man. There's I, other ways, yeah. I, yeah, I, I'm just saying, man. I think that there's like, I think gaming could be a really like, big thing, but like, you know, I'm in the world, the war zone world, and I just feel like, you know, everybody, like, listen, if Alex Rodriguez can cheat because a millions of dollars were on the line. I'm not gonna. I'm not surprised at all if somebody's got cheats on their computer and stuff. Because look at the <laughs> revenue that people are generating at home. Absolutely. You, if, you, if you're just some nerd at home and you, wow, look at gaming. You're like, look at Ninja. Look what he did. And you're like, oh man. And then you made a million dollars in at home. I totally get it. Why wouldn't you like be like? You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. The integrity of it needs to be like, there needs to be some sort of centralized, hey, you know, the the, the anti-cheats and all that stuff, they need to really work. So I agree can, with you here. You know what I mean? Um, I agree with you. I, I actually agree with you a lot on that because there are some people, streaming is so, or streaming, cheating is so mainstream now where you can get undetectable cheats for, you know, a high cost if you want. Yeah. And, and then like, I've, I've, I've heard of, this is like a strategy that allegedly some like, COD streamers. Like I talk, I, I talk with my buddies about this all the time off stream, of course, uh-huh. um, because you never want to make any allegations. You never want to point out anybody I know. for cheating. And no things hack like that. Usa- you don't want to make any no hack accusations. No accusations, Eric. That's what I'm talking about, bro. <laughs> yes, no way, this, isn't call, this isn't call of shame. I'm like secretly call of shame. You know what I mean? Uh, yes. <laughs> no, dude, you, you, you don't want to, you know, no accusations because, right. but like, but there's, there are some people that have like, they, they, yeah, they just cheat. They get a bunch of viewers because people think that they're the best, right? Yeah. And then they stop and they like lose a little bit of their skill, but then they've already built their audience and have thousands of viewers and have a bunch of subscribers and then they okay, just have okay, a community but, but, here, but okay, here's the thing though. Here's the thing. The cheaters and the high level gamers, the problem is it looks exactly the same. So yeah. So I feel bad for like a really great player who's out there. They're doing their thing. Then there's someone else who like has mastered a little bit of movement, but now they have walls and, mm-hmm. and you know, and they look the same. That's my problem. See, yeah. what I'm trying to say is like, I think the responsibility of it should be on the big time streamers to like show like, it's like, I think like, and then like the company, like, listen, uh, Activision, they're just like the major league baseball. They didn't care about the steroids because it helped the sport. True. It, it helped. It's only when Congress got involved and they were like, oh, this is illegal <laughs> stuff going on. So we got to get involved. But Activision doesn't care. They nope. want these streamers cheating and whatever, because it, it, it brings people to the game. Then the average person is out there. But I just, 
I don't know, man. I'm I'm knee deep in it now for like years now, so I I can't stand the the idea that I'm playing. And I go, oh, was that guy? I hate the fact well, was that, that guy cheating or not? Was yeah, that guy yeah, cheating yeah, or not? Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I hate that feeling. Well, they hate it. rampant in Warzone. God is God is you know they're notorious for that. <laughs> There's a website. I was I did this on my stream one time. I was like, how do you even get these cheats? So I said, let's look at one of these websites. There's a website with cheats, and you have to be a, a member. They got three hundred thousand subscribers. You know what I mean? Oh my goodness, like, dude! I'm, I'm just saying, it's like like when people go like when I what I can't stand is when I listen to like certain podcasts of the streamers and I'm watching them on 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 Twitch and they're talking like, yo man, there, you know, there's no you, people say there's a lot of cheaters. There isn't a lot of cheaters. I'm like, yo, bro, don't <laughs> talk like that. You know, like there's cheaters like, in every lobby. I feel like that's what it feels like. Exactly. Why? Like you, you think these cheat companies are sell or like the the the, the what the Cronus devices? You think they're selling one device a, a, a you know a year? <laughs> no, they, they got a whole business model that they're selling. So, anyways, I'm just saying. I think you sound passionate about it, Eric, and I love that. I I am because I really like. I am passionate about the gaming community, and I think that the gaming community has to like you know they they have to get involved with this too like like it's like i feel like the anti-cheat should be you can't run anything else on your computer except for like three applications you can run twitch you can run discord you can run the app itself but nothing else like like we all have to get involved with it so the integrity of the gaming sport can shine mm. but it can't if there's always this looming like what if you always thought like half the nba players were on steroids like if that was right. a thought, it would take away from the thing, even if they yeah. weren't. But if the if the thought is there, so the streamers themselves, I feel, have to help with that process. And the last thing about this, I feel like I'm on a rant, mm -hmm, is that mm -hmm. I think that they should separate PC players from console players. I've been saying that for a long time, dude. Because a console, it would be like if this is a, a race and I'm racing a Honda Accord, and then you pull up in a Ferrari. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I can't compete. Like, you can, like, the PC players, get them out. <laughs> I've been saying, I've been saying competitively, uh, just give options, right? Like, there's cross-platform. Yeah. Um, you know, you can be able to turn that off if you want, so you can only play against players on Xbox and PC, or, sorry, Xbox and PlayStation, whatever whatever that is. Or you can just do PlayStation, like, console crossover. Um, there's not enough people playing. I've already, they already had that for PlayStation. You're waiting too tough, long for dude. lobbies. See? I mean, dude, it's, it's But if you it's, had it's PC, tough. but if you had Xbox, P PlayStation, then yes, I think you'd be able to do it. But then here's what will happen. All the PC players, they're going to... The, I would venture to say that, like, the high-level gamers and players, I, I bet you 75% of their kills are console players. So if they had Just, to play... <laughs> so if they, if they had to play against all PC players... It'd be a sweat fest. It'd be a sweat fest, and, and then they wouldn't look as good, and they don't like that. They gotta look good. They need us. They need me. <laughs> Dude, you need me. You, you need me. To need save me. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You need me to give you those 35 kills. That's what makes you look good. But That's if you so have funny, man. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know. I just feel like the, 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 I like I think the integrity of the sport needs to be worked on. So cause it could be huge. It's yeah. already huge. You got guys making fortunes. Mm. Gaming. It's crazy. People it, making, dude. you know what I mean? It's unbelievable. You know what I mean? You're taking care of your whole family because of what you did. You know what I'm saying? You you yeah. set the you set the uh, 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 unrealistic expectation for all of us. Come on, baby, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't cheat once doing it. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, it's like there's a few people that have that kind of reputation. You, I think Doctor Disrespect, and I think Nick Merckx is another one that has like like the, there's like a certain level of integrity that people feel you guys have. And yeah, I think dude. that like all of the streamers need to get on that level. They need to get there. But even being accused of cheating has turned into a business for people. Yeah, drama, drama just you know it. Yeah. Just, some people just thrive off of it, right? They thrive they, they, off of it. And then people are making videos. Imagine if like, you know there's probably a thousand people making videos about the, oh this one person like this person cheating again, caught again, caught in this. There's there's whole platforms, there's whole YouTube channels dedicated yep. to, to talking about the... cheating. So it's like you know, I don't mm. know. Mm. Anyways. Mm. <laughs>
I hear you, man. Let's talk about well, my directing. It, yeah. Let's do it. Let's <laughs> hey, literally, let's. That was gonna be my next. That was gonna be my next tee off, dude. So you recently directed uh, Matt Rife's comedy special, and obviously mm-hmm. you've done you've done stand up yourself. What, do you prefer directing or being up there doing it yourself? Number one. You know, I love act. I, I, there's three things. There's, there's acting now. There's acting. There's stand-up comedy, and there's now directing. Yeah. You know, I, I I remember when I played basketball in high school, and I really enjoyed playing basketball. I loved the competitive. I was like really competitive. But then I started coaching, and I I had the same thrill. I'll say the same thing about directing. I really love performing. I'm a great stand-up. Come watch me live, guys. AirGriffin.com. <laughs> I'm I'm hilarious, right? But I love directing. There's something about it too that I just really got a real thrill out of it. Just what, just helping someone else, uh, you know, uh, uh, achieve their vision. Um, that collaborative, that collaborative feeling that you have, and the whole process of like the cameras and and capturing this moment. I, I just I love it, you know. And I've known Matt since he was like 15, 16 years old, so I've known him forever. And it was just like to see him blow up the way he has is just like I I feel a lot of pride and joy for him. So it was great. It was great to work on. That's do that. First off, that's awesome. Um, And congrats to everything that you've done with that. Um, And what is, what is, what is directing a comedy special look like? Like, I feel like when you direct it, you're directing a movie, you're directing a commercial, you're there. It's like, there's cut there's action. There's that, but like a comedy special, I feel like. It's in the, so comedy special is in the edit. Okay. So the, 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 the pre it's, it's what you do beforehand and mm-hmm. what you do after that make that's what your directing work is. Okay. You know, so like so you want to capture like what kind of comic is it? Is is, is are they physical? Are they just sitting there? Uh what kind of it's like what kind of picture do you want to paint as this person is telling their jokes or stories on stage? Is it a big theater? Is it a small room? So the the pre-direct the directing is the pre-work. You know, you're you're working okay. with your DP and you're you're fixing the lighting and you're you're figuring out, okay, he moves this way on this joke, he moves that way on this joke, or he's sitting on a stool during this joke. So you figure all that stuff out beforehand so you can capture it and then afterwards it's about the edit it's about making sure the timing is right and uh you know that uh, that or you're taking out a joke that you go oh this one didn't work as well or you know you got four shows you're choosing from and you're putting together this like art piece and then you're putting it out so that's really the difference per se that when you're like doing say a movie or a television show or play or something like that you know it's like th- th- there's different times that the director steps in to do stuff so when you're recording, so when you're recording a special for like a Netflix special or a comedy special or whatever, you have is this is does does everyone do two two to four shows? Oh four yeah, shows? yeah, yeah, Or is yeah, it just yeah. Yeah. so so all right? So yeah. so the pressure isn't completely just over mounting like no, don't fucking dude. blow this audience and this because this is the one. Yeah, remember you're 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 at they're oh, actually recording a television show. That's what it is. You're re- okay. we're recording a television show. There's two. If 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 you have the money for it, you're gonna do four shows if you can. You know, but two to three is like two is the minimum. You know, everybody does at least two. You know, and because you just want to have like things to. You know, you never know. Maybe you didn't get Absolutely. it in this. You get in the other one, and then you put it all together. So yeah, man. And also sometimes um, the audiences, right? Like, I've been in a couple yeah. of comedy shows, and luckily every single one of them has just been great. Like there's there hasn't been any tanking and no terrible uh, hecklers. But obviously, you can also edit out hecklers as well. Yeah, but you know, but but that's another thing too in the setup. You know, you're telling people. You know, like I would go out on stage before Matt would even go on and be like, "All right, guys, we're we're doing a television show. Um, You know, we're we're doing this special. I need you guys. I need you guys help. I need you to have a lot of energy. You know what I mean? It's like we Mm -hmm, did the mm -hmm. intro like twice. I mean, at the end, I mean, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of little secret things. That's what makes what Chris Rock did pretty amazing because you know he he filmed that special live. You know, he, yeah. the, the one I mean, he's the, a legend. Like, yeah. He, so that was like pretty amazing. That he did that live on Netflix and they, you know, he flubbed some things and then they just edited it later when it, when it came out again. But like, that was pretty amazing that he did it like that. So, you know, but most people for a special, they just, you know, doing a few things, <sighs> but that's the difference. I, and, I, and again, I love it. I feel like, I feel like, dude, what is the toughest thing about stand up? What would you say? Like, um, well, you know what? I hear in your voice that you probably have a, uh, you probably, do you, do you have a fear of public speaking? A a little bit. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I had like, I hosted one thing for the first time ever, like where it was like legitimately me hosting it. Uh, it was like Ninja Vegas and 
yeah, man, it was, uh, I feel like I did well. Everyone said I did well, but yeah, I was fucking. Well, I think that's like, I think it's like America that, that, that used to be the number one fear if, even over death with, uh, people would fear public speaking. So I heard that in your question that, so take that out of it, take that out of it. And it's nothing, you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. you, you know, like I, the, the, see, cause I heard what I, your question really was, it was really, your subtext was like, bro, I don't know how you do that. It would be so hard for me to go up there. Yeah, and like, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> you heard, you heard the yeah. reasoning in the tone yeah. of yeah, the yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's not that hard, man. You know, I, I don't, you know, it, I feel like this is why you don't do a video podcast. Cause you still, you know, you, 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 you got a little, you got a little social awkwardness going on that you don't even realize, you know, that you're just kind of like, oh, I think I'll just do it like this. Let me just do audio. Nobody wants to see, you know what I mean? But I think that it, uh, everyone, unfortunately, is a lot of people are like, would love if this was in video. I'm yeah, just like, dude, yeah, you got to you, you got to do it, man. I think you got to do it. You know, it's like, hey, you got to remember part of the reason why uh, you part of the reason why you blew up. It wasn't just the skills, you know, you, no. you kind of a cutie. You know, Thanks, what I mean? appreciate it, man. <laughs> Dang, you know, I got, you know, people always you're say kind I, of a I, cutie. I, like, look, you know, 21 still. I got that baby ah. face. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But that's what people want to see. They want to see yeah. this guy. Oh man, that guy games. Oh, I want a game too. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like you're making it cool. So now you just sound like a radio nerd now. You know what Damn, I mean? Damn, dude. Damn. All yeah. right. Get that video I'll going. I'll, 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 contemplate, I'll contemplate it, dude. I'll contemplate it. Yeah, Holy. It, how about this? All you got to do is like you just record it and then maybe you put like 10 minutes of it out on YouTube, like the mm. highlights. You know what I'm saying? You just do like some highlights, like here's the, here, here. And then, then what will drive traffic towards the audio. Oh my God, that's actually fucking genius. I know. Hello. <laughs> but here's the thing too, though. But here's the thing you can do too. Check this out. Mm. You can record this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you can still go live and be like, hey guys. Oh. And then you could go, hey guys, here, I, I was talking with Eric Griffin and I'm going to play the interview right now. And then you play it live. But I could do pre that. Pre-record it. You know what I mean? Dude, that's what we actually should start. I know that Andre and uh, Cam, you guys are listening. We should start taking like little tidbits, like little clips. Hello. And then when, I, when I'm yeah. live, I can just play like a quick little 30, 45 second clip yeah, man. streaming and get people hooked on it. Yeah, exactly. You, you could just, because you can easily like, you know, I don't know. You probably use, what do you, I use Wirecast. What do you use? OBS? Bro, or? What? I, <laughs> Wirecast was the first thing I used when I started streaming. I downloaded it illegally. I love Wirecast. For I free. I use it. I have no way, man. I'm on OBS. I've been Wirecast. You had to pay. It was like four hundred dollars. I know, like I know. But like, come oh, on. Sorry, dude. I didn't have that kind of money when I was starting oh, out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> was... oh my god, are you, are you still are you still cheap? Are you cheap? Is that no, the thing? No, people, no, no, are you no, like no, LeBron no, James? No. You're like, <laughs> I will spend. I will spend my money. I will spend money on 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 pretty much anything. But but like when I was starting out, I had dude. I was not about to drop five hundred dollars. I get it. On Wirecast, I was I was streaming for free. I wasn't making money doing oh, it. Oh, that's I true. That's true. That's true. And there was no, and there was nothing else. Twelve years ago, there was nothing else. But Wirecast actually existed. So strange, man. You're on the well, you're on the you. It's it's so crazy to think you're like you know you're like Tom from MySpace. You're like you were on the ground floor of this top eight, bro. Yeah, this was you were like you had the top eight. Yeah, man. I was top thirty two, dude. It's changed. Yeah, this is pretty. You that's know, pretty amazing. But yeah, but you know you just that's what I'm saying. So like right in you know you you see my video. I could just you know I could just put whatever I want on here. You know like I have my things I put on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Is, you know I just have all these types of things. So. You just play a video, man. All right. Just play play the video that you have edited. You know, as you go, you know, go live. You know, on Twitch. You just just, just subscribers or something. You know what I mean? If you're sub only subscriber only for this, and then right, right, right. You know. Anyway, I don't know. We're just this is boring, like, boring for the people uh, listening no, because we're, no, talk, we're talking. We're talking shop. <laughs> we're talking about me, and I'm gonna. I, I want. I'm gonna talk about you. We're going AFK with Ninja. What's he gonna say? Refocus. Come back to me. I watched I'm the sorry. first season of Workaholics. Mm -hmm. um, my buddy got me into this forever ago. I loved it. Talk to me about it, man. I mean, I know that the the show was incredible. Um, you know, any were there any like just what was like your favorite episode or craziest moments? Or well, just you know, it was like I remember getting the audition for that 
that show and the, the actually the audition for Montez was the scene about having sex with his wife and like he's in the <laughs> break room and he's like you know he was like you know I got put out the good ass baby oil like that was actually the audition for workaholics no way yeah bro. yeah so I remember re and it was way longer in the audition he really was going in so I remember reading this and thinking to myself this isn't gonna be on TV how are they gonna let this guy say this crazy stuff so I <laughs> so I really like leaned into it I was like oh this is great and then like I knew Adam divine just from in the comedy world and it's so funny i saw him like a week before i auditioned i saw him at a comedy club in brea at the improv and he's just this young comic to me and i was like and he did a set and i said to him hey you're doing good young buck you know i was giving him some like sage you know like i like Love I'm that. Telling, right and then i walk into this audition room and i see him and i'm th <laughs> and i'm thinking to myself i go oh i wonder if he's interning <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 dude. And he thought he, you want to talk about baby face, man. Now, yeah, guy, man. Like, that's what I was like, what is he oh, doing man. here? Fresh out of high school. No, he's still in high school he, interning for this thing. That's he's what in a I thought, program. man. So I, so I did the audition and it was great. And then it was like, I had to audition like three or four times. And then, you know, I just, I got the part and then the rest is history, you know? And it was like, the funny thing about it is like, I was older then. I, 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 I was probably in my late 30s, late, late 30s, like probably 39 or 40 ish when I even got workaholics. So workaholics wasn't my jam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, I was yeah. on the show, but it's not like the it way wasn't your right, 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 right. The way people like walk up to me and they're just like, oh my God, um, that was my favorite show. Those were my that was like me and my friends. I love your character. I'm always like, okay, cool. That's really great. But it's like yeah. I didn't necessarily watch the show like that. You know, I watched episodes mm -hmm. that I was on and then just to see what I did. And I was like, oh, okay. Then I was like, oh, this is silly. But the thing that made the show great to me was like these guys were real friends. They had real great chemistry. And one of my one of my favorite episodes that I did watch was the uh the the, the office camp out because that really encapsulates like who they are these characters and you know it was just that kind of show you know it was just a fun just a fun rom-com type of like you know raunchy mm -hmm. uh, you know blue you know blue comedy that they would never make today <laughs> right dude i i love first off again just i loved it i definitely loved the comedy and the style of comedy yeah, I've been me too I've dabbled in acting a little, nothing crazy. Oh, wow. Small little, like literally like small cameos, couple lines here Are and there. Are you playing whatever. yourself? You were playing yourself a lot? Half the time, yes. Yeah, it's yeah, like 90% yeah. playing myself. Uh, a couple times I, I was just doing, you know, whatever the actor or the director told me to. What do, do you think... So how many how many serious roles have you played like a lot of serious roles? Uh, I've played a few. I've played a few, but my biggest serious role was when I was on this show. I'm dying up here on Showtime because that was a drama. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the the cult one, right? Yeah. No, 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 no. no. Or, this was no? this was about uh, it was about it was about some uh, a, a comedy club. Yeah. All right. So my question: What is easier to you? Do you like the serious roles, or do you like to be able to just riff and in... drama? Drama's way easier. Really? A drama's yeah, yeah. easier. Yeah. Yeah. Being dramatic is way easier because, but because, because the reason why comedy is hard is because people think they have to be funny, and mm. they don't realize that the, the 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 situation you're in might be what makes it funny, not you being funny. If that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So that's what it ends up happening a lot of times. People come to do comedy. They're they're like, uh, they think, oh, I got to be wacky. I got to be this. And sometimes it's just yeah. like, no, the comedy will be like, you know, like, like, like the if, situation. Like, right. Yeah. Like if you, if, if they were, if, if they were doing like a Howard Stern type movie that they did and, and it was about you, like if it was like your life story and you know, you wouldn't have to be funny. You would just have to be, it'd just be like you around yeah. funny people and you reacting to what these people are doing. That's you where the, the comedy is. The situation, dude, immediately the first scene that pops into my head is Dumb and Dumber when he's got chocolate in his pants and he's shit all over the bathroom in the house and he's trying to get out. And it's like the situation he's in is hilarious, but, that's but he doesn't like, necessarily have to. Right. They took, see, they were taking themselves super serious. Like yes. they were just saying, this is how we are. Like it's so, it's very subtle. It's the reason, like when you see Robert De Niro in a comedy, He's not doing anything but Robert De Niro. Mm -hmm. But it's just now the situation is funny because it's Robert De Niro in, uh, you know, being the same guy. But now it's a situation where the person interacting with him is like, 
oh man, this guy's so serious. And that's what makes it funny. It's like, you know what I mean? The situation is what makes things funny. Reaction is what makes things funny. So all that, keeping all that in mind, you know, it's, it's comedy's comedy's very difficult. I find it for me much easier to be, to tap into like, Hey, these are the, these are real feelings I'm feeling in a situation. I'm mad right here. I'm upset. I'm, 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 you know, I'm reacting with emotions as opposed to like trying to elicit, uh, you know, laughter yeah. specifically as opposed to like wanting people to feel vulnerable and feel that they relate to you. I mean, it's a, it's a Jeez. different, you know, it's a different animal. I was not expect. First off, incredible answer, Eric. I, I was not <laughs> expecting that at all. I was, I was waiting for you to be like, oh, I love comedy. Man. Yeah. Really com hey, I love but, comedy too. But I'm just saying, I know that if you, you asked me which one would I, which I yeah. find easier. And I, I did, that was my answer. I love it, man. I think that's awesome, man. I would love to finish off talking to you about your your little one, your soon to be soon to be child. Oof. Do you? Uh, how far along is she? If you don't mind me asking, she and, is eight months. Oh. I think. Yeah, dude, it's about to happen. You know. What do I mean? you know? Do you know? Boy, it, boy. Oh. Did you yeah. do a Did you do a crazy reveal party, dude? No, no, we didn't do any yeah, of that. Yeah, I already knew the answer to that yeah, because yeah. you Come don't on, do any man. crazy. What are you talking about? What am I thinking about? What the hell am I doing, bro? Have I not learned anything yeah, about we went you a, yet? We went on a hot air balloon and we <laughs> skydived out and then the parachute was blue. We were like, yeah. yeah. You know? That's a fucking great idea, by the way. <laughs> man, imagine the chute doesn't pull and, yeah. and then there's, oh my God, that's dark, dude. <laughs> no, that is dark. It's just the dead body in the blue yeah. parachute that didn't open. You're like, well, it was oh. a boy. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh man uh, oh, dark, dark humor dude. dark yeah. humor dude we you, you gotta you gotta have some of it um so do, i mean do you think you're do you think you're ready man are you are what's the what's, you know what, what? Are you most no i don't think about? i don't think you're ever ready but i do think like listen i did i did this older you know i i you know i i i, I wish i would have done it way sooner Okay. For sure. But it is what it is. So here I am now, you know, I'm, I'm trying to work out more now. I, I really like, I'm going to a training session later. You know, oh, cause man. I, yeah. Cause I want to survive. You know what I mean? You want to, you want to be there for him. Yes. When he's yes. 10. Yes. Cause I didn't have a dad in my life. So my main goal is to just be present. I think that's important, you know? And then my mom had to like work so much to take care of me cause she was a single mom. So she didn't get to go to my basketball games and she didn't get to, you know, those kind mm -hmm. of things. And I just feel like oh no now i know what i want i want to be in this kid's life show my son this is how you treat you, you know a, a woman so i'm going to make sure i'm always loving and caring even when she gets on my damn nerves i'm gonna be loving and caring to show him like you know this is how you do this and this is how you know what i'm saying like all mm -hmm. the things that i feel like i missed out on i just want to make sure i do that so you know and it's great that you know i got money in the bank I, i've had a great career i'm very frugal you know, so I, I, you know, now I know I'm in a position where I could be like, ah, oh, you know what? I'm just going to game. And, you know, if a, if a big project comes, I'll try, I'll do it. But I, I am going to focus on family. And I think that that's something that, you know, that's what I'm looking forward to, to doing. And, and am I ready? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> you say you'll, I feel like you got a game plan. You got a game plan, man. I think um, yeah. I've heard a lot that half the job or more than half, I think they said 90% of the job of being a parent is showing up. So yeah, yeah, that's what I, I want to do. I just want to show up. I think you got up. that on lock, man. Yeah, man. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm happy for you, man. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, thank you. All right, dude. Um, <laughs> and we're finished up. Wrapping up the show. Wrap up the show. We got ten minutes. This should be probably just about just that. We're gonna yeah, do we're the this or that segment. All Eric, right. Are you ready, dude? I'm ready. Give it to me. All right. These answers can be uh, the answers that you give can be as short or as long as you want. Okay. All right. All right, here we go, dude. Uh, Call of Duty or Fortnite? Call of Duty, dude. Come All right, on. and that's the show, guys. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I don't know how you did it. Fortnite is so boring. Oh, it's so okay. boring. You're just running around. You're, you're trying and to find somebody. What you're doing, Cod. No, Cod is what. No, no. You know what? It's too cartoony. It's mm. just, it, you know, the, the movement is weird. Mm. You, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, I know I'm you not. made your bread and butter on Fortnite. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. All right. That's all what right, I have right. to say about that. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Caught all day, uh, every day. <laughs> all right, stand-up comedy uh, or TV slash film acting? <laughs> if I had to choose, gun to my head, it would be stand-up. It would be stand-up. 
I love it. All right. All right. Uh, performing for an intimate venue or a sold out packed house? Man, that's a good one too because they both have. They're both different vibes, right? The vibes are so different. You know, sometimes. You know, if, if, if I just want easy work, it would be the big sold out venue because those are just that's so easy to do. Yeah. Uh, they just laughter's contagious and everybody's just into it. But if it was if you're talking about um, just the art of it and the, the intimacy and the vulnerability of everything, it would be the so I would take the small venue. I like that. I like that answer. Uh, what is the worst, in your opinion, laundry, dishes or vacuuming? Or do you not do any of it? Oh, uh, Sadly, my wife is a high maintenance princess, so I do a lot of that. Um, I'm also picking up a lot of uh, a lot of that recently. Yeah, man, this just. Oh my God. So which one, dude? Which one would you like to never do again? Which one would I never Ooh. never do again? It would. Probably which one would be, you like to never do again? Yeah. Yeah. The dishes. I hate really? doing the dishes. Dude, actually, me- you know what? I shouldn't even say that because you know what? Actually, I don't mind doing the dishes because I just put them in a the dishwasher. It's done. Exactly. I, what I I hate like actually I hate the little things that go with all this. So it's not just the dishes, right? I'll yeah. do the dishes. I t- I hate taking the dishes out of the dishwasher. Mm. I hate putting them away. Fo- I putting them away. I hate folding the clothes and putting I them hate away. Folding the laundry. That's yeah. Me, dude. Yeah. Like, Dude, I'll put the I, shit in. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I love it. I'm like, you know? I feel like a stunt. I wake up first thing in the morning. My wife's yeah. still asleep. I'm like, I, I just put a bunch of towels, just throw them in the dish, in the washer or whatever. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, an hour goes by. It's like, all right, just slam them all into the dryer, put another one into the washer. And then now it's like, now what? Wait, now, now I got to, now I got to <laughs> fold the dryer and put. And my wife oh. has this thing where she like, she refuses to do any dishes. Okay. So like she'll get like there's no forks left. It's just the two of yeah. us, and she got to mm-hmm. use every damn fork in the in the thing. You know to what the I point would just where do? Order she'll go forks. get the big fork. She'll go get the big fork that you use making barbecue. I know so, exactly what you're talking so about. So she's dude. got this big ass fork. It, you know, I come in and go. Well, you couldn't just wash a fork for yourself. And she's like, <laughs> I can just smell. I just smell. I, I just, she she like has this gag reflex, so she just mm. smells dishes. So she does the laundry. I do the dishes, and I don't mind vacuuming. Vacuuming is the easiest. That's there's yeah, nothing it takes to vacuum. Seconds. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. <laughs> Being in your tw- being in your twenties, thirties, forties, or fifties, man, that's a tough one. You know, I would have to say here's a, here's the crazy about this answer. <laughs> I would love to be in my twenties with the knowledge of my fifties. Yes, you get what I'm saying. So yeah, it's like yeah, so yeah, so yeah. for so so that being said, I enjoyed my forties the most. Okay, because it was like yeah, you accumulated. I had 40 this knowledge, years of knowledge. Yeah, yeah. But like, if I had to choose, like, what would I? Yeah, I would. I would love to be twenty five, but like with the wisdom of an old ass man. You know what I mean? Smart. You know. Smart. So, yeah. Great. Hey, great answer. Some of these <laughs> answers have right answers, and I think that was that was a right answer. All right, you knew this one was coming. Let's see if you prepared. Uh, uh-huh. Date night out or date night in? Oh, uh, date night in all the way, man. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I mm. mean, but mm-hmm. you know what? Let me just. But let me say this though. Like, like it's like. It depends on the person too, because like, what do you consider a date out? Because like, like a date dinner, out for movie. Okay, see, yeah, going on a walk. Take like, dinner. Yeah. Take dinner out of it, okay? Because that's some easy shit. Dinner is just True. like, babe, you want to go to the place we like? You're like, yeah, let's go, and you just go and you leave. That's not a date night. Yeah. Date night is like, oh, we're gonna go do this. Uh, we're gonna go make ceramics together. Oh, yeah, we're gonna, skiing. Yeah, or, we're. Or, or, you know. Uh, oh, there's skating. like a. Yeah, we're gonna go to this. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna go to this thing and we're gonna do Z- Zumba dancing together. Ooh. Like that's a date night. So yeah, I'd rather be inside. But let, don't don't put. You, you can't count eating that you need to survive. True. You know what I True. mean? I never thought about it like that, man. Yeah. You're just opening up my eyes, Eric. Appreciate it, dude. Man, whenever, um, though, I'm, I'm here for you whenever, okay? <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. All right, fi- uh, finishing off with some other questions, dude, and then we're right. going to get you out of here, man. Uh, who's winning the Super Bowl this year, in your opinion? Um, I think that I'll take San Francisco over the field. Yeah, so, I'll, uh, I'll agree with that. Yeah, so Unfor- I, I would take... Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sad, it's sad, but, like, they are just... I And I think what happened to them last year, they are ready. They are ready. Mm-hmm. You know, I would be shocked if they didn't... If they weren't I in mean, the Super Bowl. Look what they did to the Eagles when the Eagles were home, bro. Like, no, 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 hey, in bro, Philly. Look what they did to everyone. Everyone yeah, that... Dallas, when they, when they had their When they have their full team... 
It's Debo, really. Like Debo coming out is just Trent opens Williams. Up. It's Trent Williams. It's you Trent think? Williams. Yes, yeah, yeah. They, they it's have a wobble combo. I don't know in their offense though. Debo, dude, like yeah, he's great. He takes just that pressure off of McCaffrey, so that McCaffrey can run. And <sighs> I know, but the thing is, that when you got Trent Williams, you got to double team him. He's like protecting the quarterback with the way that he does. It, it mm -hmm. opens up the running game. You know, then now. Uh, Brock Purdy has more time to make his reads. I mean, you know, the guy is like when he's it. when he's not there, they they just they just don't do well, even when Debo's yeah. there. So mm -hmm. all right. Uh what city has the best stand-up comedy scene? Uh oh, okay. Well, that's, I'm glad you said it like that. What has the best stand-up comedy scene? I would scene. say New York. That's the best I feel like is that where like the laughing house is, right? Isn't that no, what it's that? like the cellar? They, they just have so much comedy in New York that that's a great scene, great okay. community, great environment. I mean, I'm from LA, I love LA, but like we have like very a small in, in comparison, it's a small, yeah. it's a smaller scene. Yeah, I mean, y'all in New York's massive and also so crammed together. I feel like you, you know, there's yeah. probably more, there's probably more events as well happening within like, yes. you know, a one mile radius. Right. Whereas exactly. LA, you got to go all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they aren't just sure. next to one another. Okay. Where are you? Uh, I'm in uh, Florida, dude. Oh, uh, well, I shit. have two houses, one in Illinois and then uh, Florida. Oh, excuse me. I yeah, got yeah, two houses. You know how it is, man. You know, I'm making 800000 a <laughs> month. <off my, laughs> <laughs> We're the panhandle now, dude. Life's easy. We're just taking it one day at a time. You, one day rich, at a time. you rich fuck. <laughs> 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 oh, all right. All right. All right. All right. Do you eat with uh do you eat rice with a spoon or a fork or oh, chopsticks? It depends on well, it depends on where I'm at. You know, I, I do I but rice, I'll I only eat I only eat with chopsticks when I'm picking up something else with the rice. But yeah, once, yeah, yeah. once that yeah, yeah, yeah. Once that good stuff's gone, then I'm grabbing a spoon for the rice <laughs> over a fork. It's a great answer, dude. Like some yeah. of these aren't like Dude, these are right answers. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. I was not expecting these answers, man. <laughs> well, <sighs> when I write my book, that's what it's going to be about. You know, Literally. It's going to be, all, you know, it's gonna it's gonna be gonna called be The Right Answers. The right, it's going to be the right answers you didn't know were right. <laughs> yeah. Yes, dude. Yes. All right. Um, How do you know when your creative work is finished? Um, It's never finished. Mm. You know, your creative, your creative work is never finished because literally, even if you had a painting, you know, you could always touch it up. You could always, uh, you know, uh, you know, oh, I want to make this lighter or brighter or so with comedy, it's this, the thing too. Like, you know, you talk to any comic, they put out a special and after they put it out, they go, oh, I'm doing that joke so much better now, you know? So mm -hmm. I don't think it's ever finished, but you just, you, it's at a point where it's, uh, you know, it's it, it's it's ready for consumption, and it's and it's ever changing, it's ever evolving. You know, so okay, yeah. Another right, another great answer. <laughs> all right, if you had to delete all but three applications from your phone, which ones would you keep? And you have to download them from the app store, so it's not like iMessages or oh, gotcha, I got you, got you. So the the, the 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 I know what you mean. Yeah, okay. Good distinction right there, too. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so everyone, dude, half the people are like, my calendar or like, or some are like, G Google Mail count. I'm like, <laughs> my, well, my, I think my wife right. just came home. Yeah, I'm like, no, like, Google Mail does not count. Yeah, like, no, no. I would, it, it would be Spotify, Grubhub. Nice. Nice. And, um, just just one of the games that I like to play. <laughs> yeah, dude. They, I, all yeah. right, man. The amount of people that I, I, I've heard their answer and I'm like, well, you wouldn't do like a, a food delivery service? And they're like, <laughs> yeah, right, oh, right. <laughs> no. I'm just like, dude. I just think about the apps I'm on the most. Yeah, Grubhub. Literally, yeah. Grubhub's my jam. Okay, okay. Um, all right, last question, man. AFK obviously stands for uh, away from keyboard. In your opinion... Or, or uh, define AFK. What do you do when you're AFK? Um, you know, I'm going downstairs to make a coffee, or I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm, I, or I have to go check in on my wife because I've been playing video games for three hours. <laughs> Yeah, and dude. so like you know in between you know in between like, you know you know what I mean like in between yeah, drop-ins in, in between drop-ins in yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, you're running and check on it real quick <laughs> I gotta run in and act like you're not gonna and I don't just run in you know you run to the door then you like mosey in yeah hey, you just kind of like hey babe hey babe check it on me to get you a water yeah you how you doing you know what I mean that's so good that's so oh my god oh, so that's dude. what I'm doing <laughs> that is this is incredible man that's the best answer ever and Eric thank you so much for your time man and come on the show I appreciate it thank you bro and 
and uh, you know, keep in keep in contact. And when I'm in Florida, come to a show or whatever. You know, Ooh, yes, I would absolutely you know, love and, to. And, and if you play Warzone, I'd love to jump in with you. You know, one time. You know, watch the master at work. You know, the I mean? master at work. I'm a Fortnite guy, man. I hate you know what? I play Fortnite. I'll play some Fortnite. Uh, okay, you know what I mean? Okay. And there you have it, folks. We've reached the end of another epic AFK with Ninja episode. If you've enjoyed the journey thus far, please consider leaving a rating, review, and hitting that follow button. We have a ton of incredible guests coming your way, and I want you to be the first to know when a new episode drops. Until next time, catch you soon. It's AFK with Ninja. Ninja's got a show. It's AFK with